Hey Ben, I hope you're well. Um, I just watched a video that you sent me with the kind of uh, folds tutorial and I can understand why you found it a little bit confusing because there's a few things that the guy breezes past which could do with a bit more of an explanation. So I'm just going to run through the process again with a little bit slower and a few more uh, details. So I'm just starting out with a Dynamesh Sphere, <coughs> which I took out of the light box. So just Dynamesh Sphere, it doesn't really matter what project you start with. You're then going to append in, with Subtool, append in a Plane 3D. Switch down to your Plane 3D Subtool and switch off the Polysphere one. And then basically uh, what he did is, if we switch on Polyframe mode, this will be a bit clearer, is he masked and extended just one row of this shape in order to just get vertical lines, which would then crease nicely. So to do that, hold down control, which is obviously masking. I'm just gonna mask the very bottom row. And they're going to invert that mask by pressing control and clicking outside. Yeah, I'm just gonna switch off perspective as well. Uh, zoom out a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is use the uh, move button and this green arrow and if we drag that down you can see it extends this part of the mesh that just has the vertical lines yeah so extend it out a bit to get it to splay outwards if you uh, switch on symmetry so press x and pull on this red rectangle it will splay it out similar to it did how it did in his tutorial and uh, then you can go into draw mode and then with the move brush make it a bit larger maybe not that large <laughs> um, yeah you can begin to do let's switch off symmetry as well yeah you can begin to do those kind of like um, creases those kind of like cape cape creases um, so yeah just kind of like nudge it around really um, try and get these looking as close to the sort of dynamic shape as you want them to be because at the point where you Z remesh which is when you're going to retopologize it um, you won't be able to make these like really nice bold creases um, it will go back to being more like a kind of standard ZBrush surface so just try and get these looking as like dynamic as possible at this stage um, what else do you need to know at this point? I think that was kind of all he really did at this stage. When you're happy with how the creases are looking, oh, actually, when you zoom around a plane, it kind of disappears out of view. To make it so you can see both sides, just go down to display properties and turn that to double, and then you can actually see both sides. So yeah, just like tweak that until you're happy with it. When you're happy, you just go to geometry, Z remesher. You don't really have to change any of these settings and just hit Z remesh. That's going to kind of retopologize the surface um, if you switch off polyframe. And uh, that's when you can then use like the other brushes to start to manipulate it. We've still got a pretty low active point count. So if you press Ctrl D, you can begin to bring that up and have more topology. So if you press it a couple of times, it will start to smooth out a lot more. Um, and then you can really start as well, like using your uh, like smooth brush or, you know, like to smooth things out. He used the deformation mark, uh, menu, which is down here. Uh, he used it to polish, which I didn't really understand why he bothered to do that. You, if you wanted to, you could just pull this across. It doesn't really make a huge amount of difference. Uh, but what you might find interesting for your project is to use some of the other deformers. So maybe, for example, the taper. So if you drag that, it will like adjust the, the shape. Um, twist is also quite good. Um, you can adjust it with the slider, but you can also adjust which axis it's manipulating it on. So at the moment with twist, it's going along the Z axis. If I click Z off and pick a different axis, so let's say X, um, it will deform it along um, whichever X, Y, or Z axis. So you can adjust it with the slider, and also alter that adjustment with the X, Y, and Z buttons. And you can have multiple ones switched on at once. You'll start to do some really weird, uh, really weird stuff. Um, but yeah, that's basically what that guy did um, in order to manipulate the fabric. Uh, I hope that was a little bit clearer for you. Um, you could then obviously just perform a Dynamesh if you wanted to then be sort of sculpting on this. What I thought might be useful for you is that rather than forming this process on a plane, you maybe would want to do it on a different sort of ooh, a different shaped object. 
So the way that I would suggest you do that is if you go to brush, insert, and you want primitive H rather than primitive, so primitive H, uh, select, uh, I don't know, maybe a cylinder. Um, let's just begin to drag that on here. So I'm just clicking, uh, okay, let's just go back up to our polysphere and get rid of this guy. Uh, switch off symmetry. I'm just pulling out the sphere. If I hold down shift, it makes it, or it should make it go straight on. I'm then gonna do split unmask points go down to my cylinder and let's just rotate that around. Basically we're going to perform the exact same thing as before but with this kind of cylinder shape. Let's whack on that uh, double view as well. Okay so we've got a cylinder rather than just a 2D plane. I'm going to do the exact same thing again where I um, mask just the bottom but what will happen if we repeat that same process again is that you'll have that splayed part with this kind of long cylinder at the top. So I'm going to use Control Shift Clip Curve just to cut like a few of these away so it's not so pronounced at the top. Okay. Um, and then try and get that actually, sorry, try and get that on that line. Okay, great. And then Control to mask the bottom one, invert the mask by Control clicking, move drag. So same as before, except this time we're getting a cylinder that we can then manipulate. Uh, so yeah, pull that down. Again, you can switch on a symmetry and you could begin to like splay this out to give yourself just like a bit more of a, a shape. Uh, going back to the move brush, basically just doing the same as before. I'd switch off symmetry at this point. Uh, yeah, same as before, just um, yeah, bring those bring those creases in. Um, I think mm, what I am noticing is obviously where it spreads out a lot, like it can be a little bit sharp, but I think you could still get a pretty good um, kind of effect. And what it will give you is more of a like solid full shape um, that you can really begin to like work with. I'm not gonna go around the whole thing with this, but anyway. So get your curves as dynamic as you can. And then again, clear the mask and do your uh, Z-Wee Mesher, so geometry, uh, Z-Wee Mesh. Uh, divide it a couple of times. And then again, yeah, you can really start working on this. So using your smooth and using your move and all that kind of thing. You could use a move brush to begin to manipulate this. Um, obviously to get rid of that like flat top. You could even maybe just like begin to sort of uh, pull it up and then smooth it out, if you know what I mean. Um, you know, just to get more of that shape like that you kind of showed me. Um, brush flatten, let's just, yeah. You could really begin to like get more of that effect that you wanted. Um, you know, like blend that into the curves. So I'm just using the flatten brush to do that. Um, lots, like, lots of gentle taps just to smooth that out and then shift to smooth. Uh, yeah, so you could really begin to create your shape with this. Um, if you're using brushes, it will mark through to the other side, okay? To stop that from happening, brush, uh, auto masking, back face mask, okay? And then, uh, it is still showing through the other side. Urgh, okay, that's very strange. Uh, why is that happening? Usually that would mask. Hmm, okay. I guess because it's just such a thin surface. That's something just to keep in mind is that when you're using your brushes on the outside, it's going to be affecting the inside and usually back face mask would stop that from happening. Uh, but I guess because this is just such a thin surface. Um, let's maybe try performing a diamond mesh. Um, okay, so that's filled it over, uh, which might be okay for you because of this kind of design you're doing. Uh, if not, you could do the Boolean subtraction and just make this smaller and subtract it from inside itself. Um, 
And then once you've done that, if you use the, the brushes and have back face masking on, it shouldn't come through to the other side. Uh, yeah, see how you get on with that. And if you have any other uh, questions, just uh, don't hesitate to ask.